This video shows how to do a Lewis structure and extract information from it. And in this case, we're going to be using the carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. The first step in our process is to count up the valence electrons. And we can use the periodic chart for that. Uh, carbon will give us four. Each of our three oxygens will give us six valence electrons. And because we have a negative two charge, that means that we have to add on two more electrons. And so three times six is 18, plus two more is 20, plus four more gives me a total of 24 electrons to work with. In the second step, we write out the basic structure, which means that we're going to have the carbon atom in the middle, and that will be attached to three oxygens. And this step uses up six of my electrons. So 24 minus six leaves me with a total of 18 electrons. Now, I have to assign octets uh, inside and outside. And so we start with the outside atoms, and their octets require me to take up six electrons each. Now, if you do six times three, which we had to do in the first step, you'll recognize that's going to be all 18 of the electrons that I have to work with. And so this creates a problem, because now I have used all of the electrons and we can see that carbon has two, four, six around it. So this will not work. However, I can use a double bond on this oxygen. So I erase that pair and draw in my second bond here. And now carbon has an octet and all of my oxygens have an octet. Now, because I'm done, the only thing I have left to do is draw my square braces to affix the charge and finally check for resonance. In checking for resonance, I have to ask the question, is this oxygen special compared to the other two? Or is it possible through rotation to write a double bond here in two singles and a double bond here in two singles? And because it's true, and it's possible for me to write three possible structures, then I have to do times three for the resonance. And so now that the structure is completed, I can turn my attention to extracting information to answer questions about hybridization, electronic and molecular shape, and whether or not we have a dipole moment. And then finish it off by checking for formal charges. So, I have one, two, three groups of electrons around my central atom. And that is consistent with SP2 hybridization. SP2 hybridization has an electronic shape of trigonal planar, trigonal, A-L-E-L-A-N-A-R. The molecular shape, because there are no non-bonding groups, is going to be the same, A-L, planar. And we can observe that we have individual dipoles here because each bond between carbon and oxygen has oxygen as the electronegative one. And so the negative end of the bond is towards oxygen, the positive end is towards carbon. But because these are all pointing in 120 degrees opposite each other, these will cancel out. So overall, we do not expect to see a dipole. So now that we've completed those pieces of information, the last thing to do is to check for a formal charge. So we're going to need to check the carbon, the oxygen with a double bond, and the two oxygens with a single bond. And so in finding out a formal charge, we want to compare what the arrangement of electrons are before bonding, meaning our um, valence electrons. So carbon has four, oxygen has six. And what we're comparing against is what the situation is with electrons after forming the molecule. So in carbon, we have zero unshared electrons. Two, four, six, eight are in bonds. Assuming a 50-50 split, that's four. For this oxygen, we have four unshared, and here we have six unshared. We have two, four in bonds, half of which is two, and we have two in bonds, half of which is one. 
So the formal charge on the oxygen is zero, uh, carbon is zero. The formal charge on the oxygen with the double bond is also zero. And the formal charge on an oxygen with a single bond is negative one. So we can go back into the structure and actually write these values down. Zero here, a zero here. This one has a negative one. And this one will have a negative one. Now, if we observe very closely, we'll note that these two zeros and these two negative ones give me a total overall charge of negative two. The formal charges then are equal to the charge on the ion overall. And because these two are equal, this is an indicator that we have created a valid Lewis structure. We've done our formal charges correctly, and we're able to extract useful information from it.